Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, it's Cape Rugby TV time, Wednesday night, 9 to 10, and we talk about what's happening in the world of West Women's Club Rugby. It certainly looks like uh, Club Rugby is now getting into the thick of things. Lots of friendlies, lots of action. Uh, before I introduce you to my panel this evening, big thanks of course to our partners on board here with Cape Rugby TV, Direct Access, your financial services partner, Score Energy Drinks. As you know, of course, Score on board with the West Romans Club Rugby Sevens, Yes Electrical, down on Furtrecker Road, Intercape. They're of course the official uh, transport providers for Western Province Rugby and the DHL Storbers. And of course, Thorburn Security. They manage all your events and event security. Let me introduce you to my panel this evening. I'll go the other way around this time. Morgan Newman is back. How's it, James? Good to be back. Yeah, thank you. Good. Nice to see you. You're looking spiff. The last time we had you, you were looking a little bit rugged. I was a little bit rough around <laughs> the edges, James. But the uh, season's starting now. I've got to look my, I've got to be, got to, you know, look, look my, look the part. I must say that rugged look kind of suited you. You look like a real <laughs> dangerous. No, 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 no. <laughs> I needed to get it up. I needed to look like Jerome. So I'm trying to look a bit more respectable like Jerome. Speaking about Jerome, Jerome Parvati, welcome. Nice to have you back, Munir. Yeah, JP. Good to be back. And as you were saying, uh, club rugby is not officially starting, but uh, a lot of clubs are playing friendlies on, on, on Saturday. It's almost like it looks like the start of the season yeah, starting yeah, on yeah. Saturday unofficially. It's going to be good uh, to see next week uh, all the, the results of all the clubs and who've been doing what. So it's going to be good. Have you managed to uh, take a look at it? I know you've been so busy with the, with the Western Bromwich Rugby 15s guys. Have you managed to see any of the friendlies? Um, I haven't yet, JP. I've been mostly now just good Monday evenings yeah. with, the, with the Varsity Cup, so that's mostly. And um, hopefully Saturday go see some of the clubs playing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Morgan Newman on your side, Hamilton's. How are things going there? Yeah, very well, thanks, James. Uh, been around a preseason camp last weekend. Um, yeah, very fruitful, you know, getting through uh, one or two things. Played against Robertson uh, Rugby Club actually out there, which was very cool to see. I mean, <laughs> Rugby in that area of the world is, is, is really fantastic. I mean, it was packed. The stadium was packed. I mean, yeah. people came out to support their, their, their local side. And uh, great, actually, great spectacle of rugby. I thought all around some good rugby was played. You know, we got out of it what we wanted to get out of it. And then, obviously, we were out at Robertson um, on Sagistan Farm where we had our, our preseason camp. Oh, I don't and, even um, want to hear what was happening. Yeah. They say what goes on tour stays on tour. Correct. And that's all you're going to hear from me, James. <laughs> 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 All right, folks, we've got a whole host of activity coming up tonight. Tigerberg was playing. We're talking about friendlies. Tigerberg played against Belhar in their friendly match. And for those of you that uh, don't know much about club rugby, let me tell you, when Tigerberg plays against Belhar, it is a derby of note. Fans come out in, in their droves to watch Tigerberg, Belhar. It's an old, old uh, derby. We'll speak to Belhar's assistant coach, Ebrahim Birkus, as well as their captain, uh, Tando Mayakiso. And then we go across to Tigerberg's assistant coach, Bronson Weir. Bronson is back. And of course, Bronson used to be at Belhar. There's an interesting matchup for you. And then Tigerberg captain, Daniel Rob Roberts. Now, Daniel Roberts has been on the show more. <laughs> Jerome, I think Daniel Roberts, Tigerberg captain, he was a sevens captain, Tigerberg captain, we've caught him at just about every, he's been on the, more than you. <laughs> yeah, JP, that's a statement, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is a statement. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, we go pre-season, and uh, this uh, past um, Tuesday, we went out to uh, uh, Delft where we caught up with the guys at Delft's uh, pre-season training. Mr. Albert Marcus invited us uh, to come down there, and uh, we're thrilled to say that the Delft guys are in action. We'll speak to their coach, Jakub Titus, as well as Jason Figland. And then a little bit later in the show, Jerome, of course, went to Wellington to go and play against Borland. Jerome? Yeah, JP. We're going to take I a look. I don't know how Morgan felt, but in Borland, Saturday morning, it was hot. So I don't yeah. know how it was in Robertson. Yeah. I think even, even worse. Yeah. But it was, no, it was a great game. It was good, but... Well, that was good. Well, we're definitely going to talk about that during the course of the show. We'll know how that went. You did say that the guys were going out to get experience. We'll also catch up with DHL Stormers' Lok Salman Murat, uh, uh, Murat, at least, as we go behind the scenes with the DHL Stormers. And then we'll take a look at the friendly fixtures, the Varsity Cup results, as well as some of the Super Rugby results and Super Brew. So it's a fixed, jam-packed show this evening. Make sure that you don't go away. And, of course, make sure that you keep your mobile phones handy because we've got that score competition coming up a little bit later where you can win a case of score energy drinks let's take a look now at uh, the uh, highlights between tigerberg and belhar this cape rugby tv feature is brought to you by direct access your financial services partner and score energy drinks <laughs>
This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Welcome back, folks. Right, Cape Rugby TV. Um, we went out to watch Tigerberg up against Belha in their friendly. Um, Tigerberg, of course, in Super League A and Belha in uh, Super League B. Um, Jerome, you know both these clubs quite well. I think you've got a couple of players there as well. Um, what do you think of the first half? No, it's good, JP. You can see both sides. I mean, we know Tigerberg like to run, Belha like to run. But what I must say, the defense was good, um, and, and, and except the two um, sort of well, miss passes where the wing went to go score once and the ones where he just beat the guy on the outside. But I think the defense at this, time, this stage of the uh, season was very good. Yeah. Um, Morgs Bellaha, of course, uh, will be keen to show everybody that they belong in Super League A this year. Yeah, I mean, they've been there a couple of years and uh, they probably want to get back there quite quickly. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's a typical of preseason game, I thought, you know. <laughs> One or two errors, turnover ball, score in the corner. You know, so eliminating errors and obviously trying to give the ball some air also early on, you know, when there's not too much on the line, giving the ball some air and throwing and being expressive on the field is also important. So finding the balance is, is important, but a typical preseason game, I thought. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does typical preseason game mean to you? Yeah, you know, a number of errors which has which been capitalized on, you yeah. know, not too much structure, not too much first phase um, initiative, first phase sort of structure, which is great. And, um, you know, obviously t individuals wanting to put up their hand and say to the coach, listen, uh, I'm, your, I'm your first choice 12 or I'm your first choice nine or I'm your first choice five. So yeah. a lot of individual, individual brilliance also coming to the fore, which is great. And trying to find, you know, the medium where we can, when we hit the ground running, when the season starts, where both teams are playing or we, where your team is playing cohesively as opposed to individuals um, is going to be a, a battle. But um, good to see the quality that uh, was there. Jerome, I'm going to throw the same question at you now. Tigerberg, they ended up eight on, uh, on the log in uh, Super League A last year. Belha, seven in Super League B. For Tigerberg to do better this year, looking at that friendly that you've seen now, they want to do better than eighth in the log, making them top six and get into those quarterfinals. Uh, what would you say is that they need to change from 2019? I would say last year, last year the big concern for them was uh, exactly their defense. They leak a lot of tries. A lot of tries were scored against them. That's why I say now, Alian, it's, it, I was surprised to see and also what Morgan was saying, normally this time of the season, guys are scoring tries because you just let the guys run. Yeah. But both sides, the defence was good. And like I said, I know a Tigerberg defence was, they really so worked you, if, on it. So if you're giving advice to a coach in Western Province Rugby, I mean, obviously in this case we're looking at Tigerberg, that's, that's what, what your first thing that you're nailing now is work on your defence. Yeah, because I know, I know club rugby in Western Province, especially clubs like Bella and Tigerberg in yeah. Belleville yeah. whoever yeah. they can play rugby they can pass the ball they can They've hit space skills. they the can do they that know. so they most they, they neglect the, the defense component of the game and I say you mustn't be just defensive but if that's an area where you lack, lack uh, yeah, yeah. Um, then you must concentrate on that more so I'll hope that the guys uh, will concentrate a lot on that we have a defense workshop next week so hopefully all the guys will come in and, and see what uh, Norman Laker is doing with the defense and the Stormers. Yeah. So that's one aspect where the Stormers are good and they're winning games. Not that they're playing good rugby, but they're winning games because the defense, defense is sorted. So hopefully we'll see some people there. Morgs, but it's obviously a critical that, uh, as going on what Jerome was saying, uh, if defense is what you lacked in 2019 and you want to fix defense in 2020, of course, you want to hope that you don't have any other variables like you've got the same players that you had last year. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, you know, uh, defensive systems, irrespective of the players, is important. And uh, I think that is an important element of, of, the, of the game. But then keeping the same players so that they can buy into your, into your culture, into yeah. what you're trying to get to as, as a defensive system would also help, you know. But I mean, as long as you're keeping whatever it is, maybe 75 to 80 percent of the players that you had last year, mm. then one or two additions, uh, quality additions, uh, may actually make you a better defensive side than a weekend one, you know, so so if coaches go out there and strategically go and, uh, you know, get players to their club that, that maybe could add def defensive value amongst the quality that they have, because we all know, like Jerome says, you know, these are oh, the Tiger Bugs of this world, they can all attack, they can all throw the ball around, they've got individually brilliant players, but sometimes a defensive system is what is lacked on defense, you know, players yeah. can tackle, but can they tackle within a system? Yeah. All right, folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we will uh, catch up with the second half of that friendly between Tigerberg and Belha. And we'll be speaking to the uh, coaches and captains uh, uh, from both sides. Back in a sec. 
Oh, hello everybody, right, welcome back. Um, uh, nice to have you watching Cape Rugby TV. Uh, right, so as we um, were talking before the break, we went out to watch uh, Tigerberg up against Bell Hart. It's pre-season friendly. A lot of clubs busy with their friendlies at the moment. We've got Morgan Newman, a uh, legendary world international rugby superstar, <laughs> and Jerome Parvater, coach and soothsayer of all coaches in the world, uh, with us on... Do you guys like that intro? Yeah, Very yeah good. you just Very keep good. going with that one. <laughs> <laughs> my CV <laughs> yeah. I like that. I will write that CV. You know what they say? On, they, people say that what you hear on TV, you believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I hope everyone believes that I'm the world's greatest. World International Super Rugby Star. Okay. That's yeah. it. okay. Spot on, James. We can make it work like that. <laughs> right, folks, we're gonna get, let's get back out there and take a look at the second half between the Belha and Tigerberg. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Right, there we go, folks. Tigerberg, Belhar. That was, of course, the second half. Um, Morgan's a couple of hotshot players in that, uh, in both those teams, in fact. Um, you mentioned one of the guys played for Cheetahs? Yeah, Cameron. Uh, Cameron and Jacob played, uh, for, played for the Cheetahs. Yeah, Super Rugby. So there's some serious pedigree there. And um, you can see it, actually. There's some serious skills there. I mean, they play. They put the ball into the back line. I was very impressed with the back line. Putting the ball through the hands very nicely there. And, you know, breaking through lines, offloading tackles. It's not stuff you see often in, in uh, pre-season friendlies. You know, guys are still, their hands are still heavy. And um, very nice to see. I thought the, these two teams are both going to be very effective come, come the season. Jerome, anywhere in the world that you go, you want to. It doesn't matter what rugby you're watching. You want to watch running rugby, players who find space, who run through gaps, they pass the ball globally. It doesn't matter where you go. If you're watching a test match, if you're watching schoolboy rugby, you want to see players. That's what it is. If you're watching boxing, you want to see punches and you want to see knockouts. That's what you want to see in rugby. Club rugby, we see it every day. Yeah, exactly, JP. And, 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 and um, that's why I said earlier, and the guys just got so much skill and they've got that. And that's why it's so nice to go and watch club rugby. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I watch games on TV, then I switch the TV <laughs> off, or I change, change to something else. Because 
I don't want to see kicking, and I don't want to see. You always watch. No, the you whole can show. watch. I don't want to see people run into each other. Yeah. Uh, I think, and one thing it, our, I think our coaches here also don't coach that. That's why the guys they know space, they identify space, they can offer. But why? Why pass. is it that we're so good at that? Why is it that we're so good at, at, at playing this expressive rugby? Is it just because we have lots of club rugby players? The guys don't necessarily uh, over practice. Is it? What is it? I think a large reason of why we what it is is you know guys are guys want to see the ball move you know we don't we, obviously size plays a massive role in club rugby in Western Cape so a smaller guy can't run straight head on into in, into a big guy you know he needs to find the space and and we talk about this running into branches you know if you're gonna run through a tree you can't run through the to the tree stump you're gonna run through the branches of the tree <laughs> and and that's how I would, I would you know and smaller guys know this and bigger guys also are starting to learn this and yeah, it's, yeah. it's great to see coaches are instilling that in club rugby but Jerome isn't is it maybe also a question of you have two types of players the one player is a greedy player and the other one doesn't mind sharing the ball you know JP um, I'm laughing now because we uh, many years ago when Peter de Villiers and myself coach we coached the emerging team and we were in Romania, yes. so we were sitting in the in the in, <laughs> in the room with the door closed. So we talk and we talk and uh, he started to talk about defence. And um, he said to one player, "Go fetch me a glass of water." <laughs> so the guy got up, the door is closed. Guy got up and opened the door and go fetch him the water. And he came back, opened the door again, give him the water. And then he said, "Listen." This is now exactly how we need to play. <laughs> you see that wall on that side? You run into that wall. Now the door is open. You go there. So that's a simple philosophy. Yeah. Now. <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, no, no. 100%. I think Peter de Villiers was one of the first coaches to actually test the Springbok team on spatial awareness. And he said uh, that uh, he was shocked at that back in those days, how many players would just play what he called stump car rugby. And it was very few players that had the skill, uh, if I recall correctly, yeah. of um, uh, Furida Prea and um, Gio Aplon. They were the natural space finders in the team. And uh, that's what we need. I mean, obviously in West Brom's club rugby, we are natural space finders. Uh, and very few players are... Are, are, are greedy with the ball. They like to share the ball or find the gap and then share the ball. I think that's what makes club rugby so exciting. So anyway, folks, that's what makes Western Romans club rugby and Cape rugby TV so exciting. We like to, to show the running rugby. Um, and I think that that's, uh, it's, and, I, and I think also guys, if I could go back to this topic, that's one of the reasons why our sevens rugby is so exciting and 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 we 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 seem to be natural at both these sports of running rugby sevens rugby but you can see i mean you look at guys like sanatla and ruan now who played yeah, sevens yeah ruan now will never run into a guy he, they identify the space sanatla will use, use his speed and he will never die with the ball because of that so yeah. it's 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 good that we have all the sevens competitions where guys go play earlier preseason and things so that also help a lot because we play a lot of sevens in in cape town also but it's interesting you say that morgan i'm going to go to you on this one is that when when i watch the the, uh, the stormers game and, I, and if we're in a tight spot i often think get the ball to the sevens player because he'll find a way to get through the gap yeah look i mean they, again they are just especially spatial awareness is something that that, that we we don't coach enough of or we don't uh, sort of instill it in our players enough but there's heaps of space on the rugby field yeah finding the space is how you're going to get there and sevens guys there's even more space and i think that's what they just wired differently you know they, they just look for the space before so certain guys in the rugby field look uh, often the tighties you know they look at the first guy they want and they're going to hit him square on you know um yeah. And we need into to get away branch. from that. That's why we've got these shields. I hate the fact that we train with these shields. We run into the shield. Don't run into the shield. Run to the sides of the shield. Yeah, yeah. That's also a good point. Is that we, we practice that sometimes. Folks, right. We're going to catch up with Belhar's assistant coach, Ebrahim Brekas. Um, Belhar's captain, uh, Tando Mayakiso. Tiger Book assistant coach, Bronson Weir. And Tiger Book captain, Daniel Roberts. And uh, they'll play us into the break. And don't forget, of course, the score. West Brom's Club Rugby. Um, uh, Energy drinks, up for grabs, stick around. We'll come to that in a second. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and score energy drinks. Yeah, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going
Ik denk, als ik me over Skadi met de performance, als het altijd denk, dan gaan we een beetje moeg en tammes. Maar ik heb het gezien hier naar het eerste jaar, het einde van het eerste jaar, dat we toch bij beter beginnen spelen. Big derby, one of the biggest in the Western Cape. Um, boys were prepared this week, the boys came out in the numbers. They were excited for the game, excited to be here, uh, Florida Park, big deal, big crowd. Um, we practiced well. Um, as you saw in the game, we started off a little shaky, but as the boys started playing, they gained confidence. I've been uh, three years out of rugby, but I can assure you one thing. Uh, when I say three years, three years out of club rugby rather. And uh, it was great to be back here at the home of Tigerberg playing my, uh, my old team, Bel Haar. And uh, what a, ma a magnificent spectacle to see the crowd coming out and supporting both teams. Uh, nice running rugby as well. It's going to was scrappy both sides, guys throwing the ball around. But in broken play, you can see the skill sets coming through. Uh, we had a couple of good exits that I've, that I've picked up, but in terms of uh, our default shape uh, wasn't there in terms of attack. Uh, the same for Bel Haar, I think. And we, had, we were inconsistent at scrum time. We scrummed him at some time, our lineups was good and in the second half, or just the latter of the first half, we messed up a bit. So uh, I think we'll pick up that up in the next game uh, when we play Roses. So as we all know, we are here to play rugby. They want to put us a pin, but at the end of the day, it's for us a span, a stiger bird, to step up to the next level. We are now coming on Friday, we are here to play Roses. So it's going to be a tough one of the ball. So it's going to be a tough one. Het moet uh, werken als sterk is en, 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 en die numbers. So, op het einde van die dag, als ons voor ons als klap, als die numbers recht is, kan ons die game speel. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Welcome back, folks. Right, we're talking about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. As we said, a lot of action at the moment. CTC Sports, if you want to get yourself a set of rugby jerseys, or any other rugby apparel, 33090. Just SMS the word CTC to 33090. Well, we got a call from Mr. Albert Marcus, the chairperson at Delft Rugby Club, and they asked us to come out there and take a look at their pre-season training. Uh, Delft, of course, ended um, at number eight in the Northern League last year, and this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see the clubs uh, take advantage of the exposure they get, so we're out there taking a look at Delft preseason, and we're also taking a look uh, at the players behind the scenes and getting a little bit of exposure for them. This is Delft Rugby Club behind the scenes. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Well, folks, hello. I'm getting caught um, um, out of action, so to speak. Microphones are all set. Delft Rugby Club there, behind the scenes. Jerome, your, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, um, quite a, f a lot of players in Delft uh, at the field. It's good to see that. The field's not looking good, but the players are there. And I know uh, Yaku, the coach, uh, he's always, last year he, was, he hardly missed a, a training session of mine. 
uh, with that, whether it was with the Super Sport Challenge or under 21. Uh, I think he's also the defense uh, national team coach. So he's doing good work in Delft. And um, yeah, you can see, get the guys out there and the guys enjoying the training session. Mm. What was your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with Jerome, you know, numbers are always a problem. Numbers can be a problem this time of year. But to see the guys out there training, you know, irrespective of the conditions, I mean, the field doesn't look in great nick, but the guys are there, then it doesn't look like much, any complaining is happening. Running into shields, you know, practicing, getting through some real drills, and really feeling like they're getting them to practice is a plan. And, um, you know, the coach obviously implementing that plan. So great to see, I think, because there's a plan, and, and, and Oaks are, uh, you know, wanting to, to obviously play good rugby this year. Jerome, how important is it for the leadership to take advantage of the opportunities? Um, a few years ago, if I understand correctly, Delph was really struggling with numbers. And for Mr. Marcus, their chairperson, who was also at the strategic workshop, to actually make such a big effort to invite the TV guys to come, to, for Cape Rugby TV to come there, get the guys on TV, talk to the coaches, talk to the captains, show what's happening at the field. No, look, they are, 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 one thing I can say, they've got great leaders there, like the chairman, the coach. And um, one thing that they, they did right there is um, because of... Delft is getting bigger and bigger, that community is getting bigger, and it's good of them to get the guys in there, uh, in a community like that. What I would like to see is that uh, whoever the council or the municipality do more, especially in an area like Delft, where we know where drugs and gangsterism is, is a big threat to that community. If they can just do more to that facility, how many more people will come and join in, because that's rugby can be yeah. uh, can keep them off the streets or uh, there's so much uh, uh, discipline you can teach them in rugby but if we can get that right then i can see that community and delf can be a strong club one day yeah uh we can't keep talking um as much as we, we can't keep talking anymore i mean we've been talking about club rugby facilities and field facilities for so long now um, so, and, and it's unfortunate that uh, these fields are in this condition and we keep hunting the answers. We keep looking for the information to find out why it is that uh, the, the fields are in such shocking condition. I don't, we don't know if it's a matter of resources, we don't know if it's a matter of the, of the drought, we don't know if it's a matter for the city around finances, but we'll keep trying to find the answers. Uh, folks, we managed to catch up with Delft coach Yaku Titus. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. For the first time, we can see the history of Delft Rugby, that we have 50, 60 players on the Dinsdag and the Oefen. Last year, we began with Delft. It was so many numbers, but this year, you can see the Owens, the Owens is less. And we have a week ago to play. Tegen Young Wesley's, ik het, ons was 60 op die veld. Wesley's het met twee spannen gekomen. Zo, so, ik moest al 60 een kans geven, dat hulle speel, dat hulle net 10 of 15 minuten onder die blad kan krijgen. Ja, voor alles, die bij Delft, uh, ik weet of ik het mag zeggen, nie, maar gangsterisme is, is een evelie. En ik moedig bij je van die jong leid, ik is aan om te komen speel. Kom speel, blijf weg van die straten af. En, so you see, as it's going to be dark, then we have to go to the house, because it's dangerous in the house. It's very optimistic, shall I say. Our self-trust is there. So as I've seen, the people in the league, the fixers, are not going to be able to do it. So they begin actually with the top nine. So they have to bring your own game in a year. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Yaku Titus is, of course, coaching at um, uh, Delft at the moment. Uh, Jerome, you say uh, Yaku's involved with um, some of the, uh, the national structures. Yeah, he's with the National Defence Force. He's in the Defence Force. And, uh, yeah, he's a, like I say, he's a... And what better guy is a coach? Because he's in the defence, you know discipline. And um, for a guy like that to have sort of a leader in your club like that, that um, can install that discipline, you don't want better than that in, in Delft. Okay, when you were saying earlier on that he's a defense coach, I thought you meant he actually coaches defensive skills. No, <laughs> defense force. Two very different things, Jake. So, so Yaku is actually in the defense force coaching the defense <laughs> rugby team. All right. <laughs> Delft rugby team. And defense force. Yeah, I got it. No, all right, okay. Uh, not all the... Not all the, the, the 
the muscle fibers in the brain are switched on at the but moment. Unfortunately, everything is D. It's Delph and Defense, and so I can Delph, understand. Yeah. At your age, you all get confused. Thank you, Jerome. Right then, folks, uh, we also managed to catch up with uh, Jason Figland. He is a player at Delft. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Yes, um, that like by a balloon, so it's, um, so you see from now until my numbers is very good, and that like to all good fun as a pre-season. And so as you can see, it was all our first friendly game, and we we are really good for the um for the season. So um, we are out for a lekker season, for and to. What I can say is that our own is not our real, it is very consistent, it is very consistent, and and our own is always the full, our own is always full numbers, our own is never more than 40 men, but very good is for the half, but never from the first was it. So I shall say, our consistency is very good this year. Um, look, as I na last year, look, we had a very good year this last year. Um, our own is still not expecting that our eight, um, that our eighth will end up, but um, our own is still for us. Um, what we saw in the for us is a very good season in, um. Um, samen met die gehalte mannen wat ons zit en die kwaliteit wat ons zit hierdie jaar, um, het ons groot plannen voor ons voeren toe. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Well, welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV time, and we talk about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Uh, right, for those of you that want to win yourself a case of Score Energy Drinks, double three oh nine oh, double three oh nine oh. You put yourself in the mix to win a case. There you see the logos behind me now. Win a case of score or energy drinks, just SMS the word score to 33090. Congratulations to last week's winner, Betty Bailey. Betty, somebody from Cape Rugby TV is going to be in touch with you soon and you walk away with a case of score energy drinks. Folks, when we come back from the break, we're going to take a look at what Jerome Parvada was up to um, in Wellington. And we'll take a look at the friendly fixtures uh, coming up this week. And don't forget, of course, DHL Storm is coming up in a bit. Back in a sec. Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, it is all systems go at Western Province Rugby, and there's a whole bunch of friendlies. Of course, these are all friendlies that have been endorsed by Western Province Rugby, which is very important. Let's take a look at some of the friendlies coming up this weekend. This is on Friday, the 28th of February. Um, firstly, is Roses up at uh, Tigerberg are hosting um, Roses United. Then Villagers host UCT, and UCT host Busy Bees. Jerome, uh, Roses United coming to Tigerberg. Tigerberg just come off the Belhar game. Um, this will be a good test for, for, for Tigerberg to keep building on possibly the defence as well. Yeah, it would be because Roses are one of the top clubs in, in the Boerland. So it would be good for, for them to see, uh, their coaches to see where they stand. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good game on Friday evening. Morgan Newman, Villagers playing against UCT. Um, that'll be a tough game for UCT. I know Villagers, of course, uh, beat Hamilton's last year. So we, we're, we're expecting that uh, UCT will have a bit of work to do. 100%. I mean, villages are on a bit of massive rebuilding, actually. They lost a lot of players, I think. Um, <laughs> and um, their management and their, you know, their execs. I mean, yep. you know, um, uh, there's a lot of changes happening at villages currently, uh, you know. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what, what their performance is like. But if they get the right numbers down there with the right leadership, uh, I think they're headed in the right direction. I'm assuming it's a bit of a triangular because villages are up against, but there's another UCT team playing at the same time against Busy Bees. Um, Jerome, so same thing. Busy Bees, they're looking pretty good this year. In fact, I spoke to Alfred Kewana yesterday and he says the guys are having great fun. Yeah, and look, we've, we've saw on the show a few weeks ago what they do at Busy Bees. So the guys are looking good and they're also in second year for them in, in Super B. They want to do a bit better, but they look good. So yeah, and it, it's against UCT, the guys who are not playing varsity cup. So yeah. it will also be a good test for them. Other friendly fixtures then coming up this weekend. This is, of course, on Saturday. Lots of friendlies. Uh, Franz Hook up against Blue Stars United. Elsie's Rafir up against Young Stars. Windmill and Young Stars. Langa, uh, that's, of course, uh, Young Stars Wellington, folks. Langa take on Rangers. Hamadiers are up against Fora. St. George's play Ashton. Goodwood play Gordon Leopards. Morning Star take on Blakes. Hands and Hearts and Young Gardens. Atlantis and Stelco. That's Stellenbosch Coronations. Elderberg take on Hamilton's, Solorians and Villiers, Dorp and Simondium up against All Stars. Um, Morgan Newman, I see Hamilton's in the mixed egg, up against Helderberg. Yeah, we're up against Helderberg, traveling down down uh, down the N2, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I think you know we we were allowing 25 players in each in each team, so first, seconds, and thirds all 25 players, same with, with under 20s. So yeah, numbers 
there's a lot of players there, you know, uh, yeah. 75 players just for the first, second, and third. So we'll make sure our numbers are right. But uh, we're looking good. Very happy with what we've, what we've achieved so far this year. And um, looking to improve now. We're back to back for the next four weeks. So, mm. yeah, trying to hit the ground running. Jerome, again, um, we've seen it before. Uh, Helderberg Super League B, a good way to test themselves. They're playing against a Super League A club. That's what you want. You don't want to play against a weaker club because you want to pre prepare your teams for, I mean, there's some good teams in Super B. Yep. So you want to prepare your teams against quality opposition so that you can know what to work on. And the players also know what it takes to play against a quality team. So come playoff times, they're used to playing against stronger opposition. All right, folks, talking about stronger opposition, the Western Brothers Rugby 15 are in full action. They, of course, uh, went out to Wellington over the weekend. We'll speak to Jerome Parvat about that in a second, but let's take a look at some of the practice session behind the scenes of the High Performance Centre. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. The high performance, uh, Western Brothers Rugby 15 boys in action. Jerome, uh, way to now, how things going? Uh, JP, I must say, uh, we, we, we're very happy with the progress that the guys were making from I mean, four months ago to where they are now. It's um, skills, uh, conditioning, contact. Yeah. Um, the whole package and game wise because we've played a few games already so yeah the guys i think the coaches uh, morgan you guys at the clubs will be happy if the guys come back now to you and join the clubs uh the work that we've put in and they must just continue and maybe uh can also help the guys around them like they've, they've they have got a sort of a standard now and just go and, uh, and set that standard and just continue working yeah. out do you feel like your job's done now for a bit um yeah, uh, because the clubs are starting now yeah, uh, yeah. and um, we only start in April. So we're going to release the guys to go back to the clubs. And once we need them, we'll call them if they need yeah. to come and Will play. you track them a little bit from the time now? Will you keep a tra an eye on them? Will the, co the coaches, their coaches give you feedback how the things are going? Yeah, they will the give, the, give us feedback and, 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 and also nothing stop us from bringing in them in on every second Monday just to see where they are. And yeah. Yeah. So that's that's well, the plan any, forward. Any of Jerome's guys at your side? Yeah, we got four or five of them there, and um, yeah, it's important that well, these players understand that you know, in order to stay part of Jerome's mix, you got to play well for your club. Yeah. And uh, often guys forget that, you know, when they get called up to uh, higher honors, call it that, you know, coaching uh, when you at the HBC, you often think that you know that's the you don't need to perform at your club to be to, to stay in Jerome's eyes. So we have a, we have a good relationship. We chat a lot and. Uh, Players need to go to their the clubs now and perform, you know, and uh, make sure that they're present at their clubs and not use the Western province as an excuse. Go down to your club, show face there, and hopefully impart all the knowledge that Jerome has taught them. 
important the players that we have at our club, you know, because yeah, yeah. obviously they're learning. They're amongst great company there. There's a few province guys that are in the mix there. They're learning little, you know, one or two little things that we maybe don't know as coaches or we're still learning as coaches. And for these guys to come down and impart that knowledge onto the squad that they, if it's Hamilton, then it's Hamilton. You see the difference. You see the, you're 100%. Yeah, are you seeing see. the difference? Like, has John, Jerome made a difference on the players? They've gone, it's like, they've gone, it's, it's like going on an international, you come back, and all of a sudden you're a wow. Yeah, look, I mean, it's no secret. I think the guys that are at, with Jerome mm. are, are, are of, our, of our better rugby players. Yeah. And um, it, we've seen it, uh, we one or two, you know, they've come, uh, they played, yes, they played in Boland, but they also came and played in the friendly against Robertson over the weekend. So they played 80 minutes for Jerome and then still came and did a 40 minutes for us, yeah. which is fantastic. And you can see the difference. You can see the guys in a class of their own. But got to keep it up if they want to stay part of Jerome's mix. That's important. Talking about the um, friendly that happened at Boland this weekend, we managed to get some footage there as the Boland uh, guys took on the, the Jerome's Western Province 15. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. Here we go, uh, Boland, uh, DHL, Western Province, uh, 15 there. Jerome, what did you take from this game? Or what did the players take from this game? Yeah, Jeff, it's the second, it's the second time that we play Boland because we have uh, Boland come to Cape Town and then we'll go to Wellington. We, every year we do that. So um, uh, the first game guys weren't really up to standard but this game the guys were really flat out and um, uh, we actually beat Poland by far and uh, it's good to see the progress that the guys were making. All right. Um, any input there, Morgs, from your side? No, I think obviously, you know, this is, these guys are, this is the next step for these guys and, and it's important that they, that they realize that, that they, they grasp it with both hands. You know, don't take it for granted the opportunities that Jerome is offering them uh, at this time of the year. You know, often, I mean, back in the day, these, these opportunities didn't exist. They're going to train at the HVC and get knowledge from coaches that are, that are involved in the, in the Western Province. Mixes. Played Wellington on the major stadium, playing against provincial players. Exactly. You know, these are lessons. And, uh, and, and when you win players, go down there. They've got to steal with their eyes and ears as much as they can because yeah. we want to see them come down and, and make... The, the whole Western Province club rugby seen a better environment, you know, wow. imparting their knowledge. So great to see, but uh, it's now time to, to represent your club and, and play good rugby. I love the way that you express that. Steal with your eyes and your ears. That's, that's nicely said. Right, folks, we're taking an ad break. When we come back from the break, we'll take a look at what's happening with the DHL Stormers. Four in a row now. This is what we're expecting from a uh, DHL Stormers rugby team. Uh, we'll be back in a sec. Welcome back, folks. 
Cape Rugby TV time. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Now is a fantastic time for all of the clubs out there to make posters, especially with the matches that are coming up, so that we can share those posters with your sponsors on TV. Great way for your club to, to raise a bit of extra money and get some sponsors on board because they are going to be on TV. Right, we went out to the DHL Stormers. Of course, uh, they're up against the Blues this coming weekend. This was, of course, again after the uh, win against the Jaguar. But uh, let's first take a look at some of the behind-the-scenes training with the DHL Stormers. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. There we go, the DHL Stormers, Jerome, four in a row now. Can't want, you can't want more than that. No, no, that is, that is good. That's, uh, we can't ask for more, uh, JP. Um, I just think that um, Blues Saturday will be a good test for the guys coming uh, this Saturday, but the guys are on fire, doing, doing great work there, playing good rugby. And yeah, so that's all that we ask. Keep on win winning. 100%. Your feeling on the Stormers, Morgs? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, draws worked in their favour, obviously, you know, but just look at the points on the board, you know, do you have a home run the way they've had? Is, is obviously the, the, the better side of the draw, but you still got to put the points on the board and they've done that, you know, so you can't really complain. It's going to be interesting to see what Dubber does when he's got to rest the, his, his, the, the seniors or rest some of the Springboks to yeah. see the depth in the squad. That'll be, that'll be important when they go on tour because the tour can get very long if you're not picking up results. But uh, right now, so far so good and it's good to see. 100%. Talking about local guys, Salman Marat, of course, hails from uh, the, uh, the local areas. Uh, did he actually play for Vineyards? Uh, no, but he's at Vineyard's Club. But he's at Vineyard's Club, though. Yeah. But yeah, of course, from the pole, neck of the woods. Salman Arad playing Stormers uh, lock at the moment. We managed to catch up with him behind the scenes. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. As we all know, I think the Jaguars is a quality side. Uh, so that was certainly a game that, 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 that we needed to win. Um, Obviously, they played in the final last year, so once again, they, they're a quality side. So I think for the team, that's a, that's a great win for us, great morale booster. And uh, hopefully we can carry on that. It's, it's, it's good confidence going ahead into the tournament. Um, obviously, the Blues this weekend uh, getting a good result against the Bulls, so they'll be confident as well. So um, I think we'll be ready for that. Um, hopefully we can, we can perform. Uh, once again, it's a home game for us and we enjoy playing at home. So hopefully we can uh, put up uh, a good performance for the fans. I heard yesterday that the ticket sales has been going through the roof. So we're expecting another, another sold out crowd, which is always great for rugby and especially for us. Um, so we're looking forward to the occasion. Uh, it's always special playing against the All Black team. You always want to test yourself against the best. 
Um, so we're looking forward to the occasion. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Direct Access, your financial services partner, and Score Energy Drinks. DHL Storm has locked Simon Murat. Um, Jerome, he's playing some uh, great rugby at the moment. He's looking very good for a youngster now. I mean, it was good last year giving him that opportunity yeah. to, to get him, give him game time. He didn't play a lot. But, I mean, now he played 80 minutes in almost all the games now. So, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's still young, still 21. So, a great future ahead of him. Yeah. Morgan Newman, I believe you're looking for some locks. Simon Murat there. Yeah, James, he's just slightly out of my budget. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Yeah, good rugby player, James. I mean, yeah. if I could have him, I'd take him with open arms, wouldn't yeah. I? But uh, now he's playing fantastic rugby. And um, yeah, if he's managed correctly, I think he's going to be a stalwart for many, many years to come. All right. It looks like he's uh, also very much maturing into that position. So looking good. Salman Murat, hometown uh, player. All right. Let's take a look at some of the results then uh, from the weekend. Uh, the Crusaders were a 33-13 win over the Highlanders. The Sharks beat the Rebels 36-24. The Chiefs went down to the Brumbies 14-26. And the Reds with a massive win, 64-5 over the Sunwolves. And it was a great win for the DHL Stormers at Newlands over the weekend, beating the Jaguars 17 points to 7, while the Blues beat uh, or the Bulls 23-21 in a very close game. Coming up this weekend, more Super Rugby. Highlanders are up against the Rebels. The Waratahs take on the Lions. The Hurricanes up against the Sunwolves. The Reds and the Sharks. And then it's the Stormers at Newlands against the Blues. And the Bulls take on the Jaguars. Folks, for those of you that have not uh, yet joined our Super Brew Rugby Pool, uh, it's time for us to take a look at the top 10 at the moment. Cape Rugby TV Super Brew Pool. Uh, on the top, number one, coming up six points. Um, Executioner, Golfer 7, BE. Come BEE -E comes up, Muta at uh, number four, Speed, SB, Zion, Salopi 15, Asom at number nine, and Jacques Vulcan at number 10. Those are our top 10 in the Super Brew pool. Varsity Cup results over the weekend. UWC went down to Marty's, and then CUT drawing with Ikees, 44 all. A close game there, but a lot of points on the board. And of course, uh, fixtures coming up uh, shortly. Marty's are up against Tix next week while Ikeys are up against uh, Vitz. Jerome Parvata, your rugby plans for the weekend? Uh, the club guys are playing at Newlands. Um, so, yeah, I'll be at Newlands and then uh, hopefully go and see what clubs are playing where and see some club rugby. Fantastic stuff. And Morgs, you're, of course, going to be up against uh, Haldeberg. Yeah, we're up against Haldeberg. If Jerome's looking for good rugby to watch, come down to Haldeberg. I'm sure, right. my, I'm <laughs> sure our guys will be. I'm sure our guys are ready to go and looking forward to the season, Jeps. Uh, that's great stuff. Right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was fantastic having you both on the show. Folks, uh, that's a wrap from us here at Cab Rugby TV. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.